All right, in this set of video tutorials, we're going to be covering web forms. And this could bring anything from a login form to a secure credit card, e-commerce form, an upload form, a contact form. So web forms are used quite often on the web to exchange data between websites and do all sorts of things. So we're going to look at the basics of building some web forms. And they happen to be some of the more difficult of HTML tags um, that there are. Web forms tend to have a lot of properties and a lot of attributes and values, and they're quite complex, and there's quite a bit to them. So we're going to tackle web forms here in the next few videos. And uh, so here we go. The web forms start with the tag that is just simply called form. So we open a form tag and we close a form tag. Now the form tag itself has a lot of properties um, and attributes. So let's look at a few of those. The first one we're going to do is called action. We're going to say action equals, and inside of here, I'm just going to put a pound sign for now. But this action equals is just like the relative and absolute paths for the image and link tags we looked at before. This is going to be the path to a file that processes the data when the user submits the form. So HTML and CSS only display the form. Once the user clicks submit, that data is gone really, unless you submit it to a page that actually takes the data and emails it or puts it in a database or charges the credit card or logs a user in. So the processing of the data in the form is much beyond the scope of this um, series here, but we'll get into that in the more advanced series when we talk about PHP and programming languages. For now, we're just gonna leave this action as this pound sign, um, but just know this will eventually be the processing script. All right, the next attribute of the form tags is going to be method. So let's say method equals, and you have two options inside of here with forms. It can either be get or post. And we'll talk about the differences between those two once we actually build our entire form and understand a little bit more. For right now, I'm gonna set it to get. If you don't know which one to use, I would highly recommend you set it to post, unless you know you specifically need get, then always use post. For right now, I'm gonna leave it on get. The next attribute here is going to be name. So name equals, and this is just simply the name of the form. This can be whatever I want. I'm just gonna call it sample form. So again, this is just an arbitrary name that I've made up here to um, uniquely identify this form in case I had multiple forms on the same page. And the last part we're going to do here is going to be called ints type. And we're going to set that equal to multi form, whoops, multi part rather, slash form dash data. Now that's a little bit um, of a tricky one there, but what this enables the form to do is to upload files and to submit files. We could be pictures, JPEGs, Word docs, Excel documents, PDF, anything. So by adding this, inside of the form tag, we've now enabled essentially this form element to be able to upload files, which we'll look at in a later tag. So that's the basics of the, of the attributes of the form tag. There are a few more that can go in here, but that's the essential ones. And so let's go ahead and start out um, with our first actual form element. So inside of here, we're going to add the tag input type equals text. And we're going to say name equals, and then for the name value here, we're going to set this equal to just client name. So we'll just say client name. And input tags are just like the image tag and the meta tag up here. They're self-closing tags. So they don't have a closing input, they self-close. So let's just leave this much and let's save this page and let's open up this form page in our web browser to see what it looks like. So let's double click our forms. I've created a new document here, um, a new HTML page for this forms. You'll probably want to do the same thing because there's gonna be quite a bit of code here. You can see here that I've just got my single input field. I can type data in here, um, but there's no way to submit this. It doesn't tell me what's supposed to go in here, but at least I have my first input field. So let's jump back here to our code. And in order to tell the user what they need to put in, to this field, we need to add a label. So right above this, I'm gonna add a tag, which is the label tag. So I'll say label for equals, 
and this value of the for attribute should match the value of the name attribute. So I'm going to copy that, paste that right in there. I'll tell you what that does in just a second. And uh, we're just going to say um, name, and then we'll close the label tag. Let's do name colon space. So let's save that and come back here and refresh. And you can see that label adds the label here to tell the user that they're supposed to type in their name. So we would type in the name. Now what that label does, the reason why we added four equals client name, that actually enables the user to do this action. So they can click here and type, or they can actually click on the name here and it will insert the cursor directly over here. Now this is only going to work if I have an ID equals, and we'll set this equal to client name as well. And we'll get it. We'll talk about IDs once we get into CSS. But once I have that in place, you can see I can click directly on name and actually inserts my cursor right there. So just a little bit of a, a bonus feature there, I suppose. Now I'm going to delete the ID because I'm not going to be using that for the rest of the time um, because we haven't talked about IDs quite yet. I don't want to introduce them into here. So I'll leave off the ID. I just wanted to demo kind of how that worked with the four equals. Okay, so we've got our first uh, input field inside of here and it's working great. So let's add another one directly below here. So we'll start out with our client name and next maybe we want to have the person input their gender. So this will introduce a new HTML tag we haven't covered, which is the break tag, BR. And notice it's also a self-closing tag. It has this slash as well. And the break tag um, just in introduces a blank line. And I'll show you what it would do before and after. So let's say I had some text right here and I saved and refreshed here. That text just appears directly after the input field because input types are in line. But if I wanted this text to go down on this new line here, I can introduce a break tag in between those two tags, BR, and that's going to force that text down to this line. So that way I can build my form horizontally and not have it run all the way, or rather vertically and not have it run all the way horizontally across the page. So I'll introduce a break tag and let's uh, do our second one. So I'm going to introduce the uh, gender. So we'll say gender and uh, let's do another break tag here. And after gender, we'll do a label. So this label is going to be a little bit different because we're actually going to do a radio button, what's called a radio button. So we'll say input type, whoops, I forgot my opening bracket there. Input type equals radio. And we're going to say name equals gender. And we're going to say value equals male. And then finally, after all that, we're going to say male. And I've actually missed my self-closing tag there. And then finally, we'll close off the label tag. OK, so let's save this and refresh and see what that looks like in our browser. So now you can see it says gender male, and they can select male. But obviously, we need to add the other radio button in order for this form to work how it's supposed to. So I'm going to copy all of this code right here and paste it all directly below here. I'm going to introduce a break tag in between these two. So we'll put, put the break tag to make these labels go on separate lines and copy and paste there. And I'll just change male to female in both of these spots. Save and refresh. And now you can see I have gender male and the user can now pick one or the other. That's the way radio buttons are supposed to work. If your radio button lets you choose both at the same time, it's broken. So you need to make sure that the name value so gender and gender, this has to be the exact same for both radios. If I change this and put an S on the end and come back and refresh here, you can see now I can do this, which is definitely broken. You should never have a radio um, element that allows for multiple selections. It can only allow for one selection by its nature. So make sure that the name is the same, otherwise you'll run into that problem. Okay, we've got our radio button in place. And the next one we're going to do is a simple drop down. So we'll come back to our code and let's add a drop down. And the drop down one is a little bit different. So here we, we have input type equals text. We have input type equals radio. And the next one is going to be slightly different. So again, we're going to separate this out with a break tag so that it forces it down on a new line. 
and let's add our label first. So we're gonna say label for equals, and we'll just call this state. And uh, we'll say state and close our label. And then we're gonna introduce this next tag. Now the drop down menus are in a tag called select. So it's gonna be select name equals state and ID, we can just set to state as well. Um, we actually, I guess we'll, I'll leave the ID out. I mentioned I wasn't gonna use those, so we'll leave that out. And we'll close our select. And then inside of the select menu is where we put the options inside of the dropdown. So they're called option and it's option value equals, and I'll just say CA and then the text goes inside of there and we close the option. And I'm gonna copy this line and paste it four times down there because we're gonna have four options and I'll just change each of these. We'll say California, maybe we'll say Arizona, and maybe we'll say New York. If I was gonna support every state, I would in fact need to do this 50 times. And maybe we'll say Florida. So we'll just leave this simple with four options here. So I have my label for state and then I have the drop down menu, which is a select. And then inside of there, I have four options. So let's save that, come back and refresh. And you can see now there's the state and I have this drop down menu to where I can pick any one of these items that I want. Except I spelled Florida wrong, I just noticed. Florida day, fix that. And uh, I guess we'll stay consistent. I'll do uh, colon space after each one of these labels. So it's kind of the same throughout there. Okay. Um, that's the uh, a simple form. Now I wanna add two more tags before we move on here. And these two tags are called field set and legend. And they help somewhat structure forms because oftentimes I'm sure you fill out web forms on the web that are uh, quite large and long and you maybe have to put credit card details and billing details and shipping details. And so these two next tags will help us format these a little bit better. Now, I'm just gonna zoom my text out just a little bit so we can see all the content inside of here. And the, the tag is called a field set. So let's add the tag right here. It's called field set. And it has a tag called legend. So I'll just call this maybe personal details. And I'll close the legend tag. And then I'm gonna close the field set tag after all of these form options. And once we refresh this, you'll be able to see exactly what this does. I'm gonna take all of the code that's a child here and tab it over because now the parent tag is field set and all of these are children, so they should be tabbed over. And now let's save that, come back to our browser and refresh here. And you can see what that does. Uh, it looks like I actually have an error in there. What did I do? Let's see, there's my field set. Oh, I need to close the field set. I didn't actually put the closing field set. There we go, save and refresh. And you can see it just adds this little border around the tag or around rather the form elements. And then this part is the legend. It kind of sticks it right in the middle there. So that's what field set and legend do. And there is a really simple web form. Now in the next video, we're gonna add a few more elements and we'll add our submit button.